So white sharks have a global distribution. They are a temperate species, uh, by, uh, by and large. Um, in terms of DNA, which is the area that I work in, there's two major lineages of white sharks. There's uh, a Pacific lineage, which is in Australia. It's also in the North Pacific and around uh, Japan, off the coast of California. So that's one lineage. Um, they, they are distinct amongst themselves also. There's no movement between California and Australia and New Zealand. Then, then there's another lineage uh, which is in uh, South Africa has been where most of the genetic work has been done. So we know there's a very deep break uh, right about here, um, which is quite interesting. And I've done some genetic work um, personally and what we find is that here in the Northwest Atlantic, we are in this clade right here, but they are distinct. So it's much like a situation like this. They are in this group, but they are, they are distinct from South Africa. So we do have our own little group of white sharks in this area. So um, when you think about where white sharks are, people probably think of white shark hotspots, where you might have seen on Discovery Channel videos about white sharks, shows about white sharks, and one hot spot for white sharks in the world is Australia, as much as it pains me to admit that it is a hot spot for white sharks. Um, so in fact the world's largest, uh, sorry, the, the, the all tackle world record for any fish is a white shark caught off South Australia. It was 2,664 2, pounds. It's a pretty big fish, about, about 16 feet long. And this guy right here, whose name was Alf Dean, he uh, reeled, reeled that guy in in South Australia in 1959. So that record has stood. That is the largest fish caught on rod and reel. Um, nowadays, uh, the Australians are a bit more uh, enlightened with white sharks. And there's actually, down in South Australia, there's a burgeoning um, cage dive tourism with white sharks. So tourists will actually come pay a lot of money to come down and get in the cage and uh, take pictures of the white sharks and have a, have a much more sustainable experience than, than coming up and uh, string it up alongside the dock. So the white shark definite hotspot is Australia. South Africa is another hotspot. Um, you've probably seen, some of you have probably seen Discovery, a show or a series of shows called Air Jaws where sharks jump out of the water and take seals. They look much like that. They get a lot of pictures. I mean, that's pretty impressive. This is like a 10-foot fish launching himself that far out of the water. So that, that's, um, that breaching behavior is documented off um, the Cape Coast of South Africa. So definite hot spot there in South Africa, uh, which if you ever go kayaking in South Africa, never look behind you <laughs> because uh, you never know what you're going to see. So what about the North? Northeast US, is this a hot spot for white sharks? I mean, you wouldn't think so. If the Coast Guard's issuing a warning for white, somebody saw a white shark and they issue a warning, it must be pretty unusual, right? Well, no, I mean, the white shark, this area, the, the Northwest Atlantic, was once considered the third or fourth biggest hot spot of white sharks on Earth. And uh, in this paper in 1985, um, uh, Casey and Pratt actually came out and said that. This is the Northwest Atlantic, they actually, direct quote was something like, uh, the Northwest Atlantic has the largest density of small, of juvenile white sharks of any other comparable place on Earth. So, um, white sharks in the Northwest Atlantic, they've been recorded in the Gulf, they're down in Florida, though, you know, it seems pretty patchy. These are all um, just sightings and, and captures and things. Um, you know, kind of patchy, uh, records up here, but if you zoom into our area, all of a sudden you see a whole lot of a whole lot of sightings and captures and so on and so forth. And the timing, just so you know, April to November, that's when all the sightings and all the captures of white sharks in their study took place. So that's really the time when white sharks are here. And if you look down, it implies there's some sort of maybe a summer, summer, spring and summer, late fall and then maybe they come down here based on, based on their data. Now if we zoom into our area here, so we all know where we are, Long Island here. So yeah, there's a lot of sightings. The triangles are juveniles, uh, the, the circles are adults, and the, the uh, open cir 
circles are pairs. And they, in this paper, suggest that some of these pairs were actually mating uh, pairs or pa pairs about ready to mate. So whenever a biologist would look at this sort of thing, juveniles, adults, and adult pairs, we would immediately think reproduction. Reproduction is going on here. And indeed, many of these juveniles are at the size of birth. So um, the other interesting thing here is you see a lot of these sharks are, all, you know, they're not far offshore, but they're offshore. They're not right up, you know, right up in here. They're not really in the estuaries at all. This, to me, is pretty interesting. They're not in there. There's, as far as I know, there's really no evidence that they go in there um, in, the, in the Long Island Sound. But this is quite interesting to me, quite a high density right in this area, um, at least back, back, back before 1985. So clearly, back, back in the day, there were a lot of white sharks around here. And it was you know, solid evidence this was a place where they came for reproduction. So how do we know this? I mean, this is a newspaper clipping. This is a white, big white shark that washed up on a beach. Um, that's one way that they get these data. But most of the way they get this data is because round about the time this was going on, people were out there fishing for white sharks, both recreationally and commercially. So um, actually, you can't see it very well. This guy, this captain right here, his name was Frank Mundus. He had a, he had a, he was based out of Montauk. He was very, very famous shark fisherman. He was actually um, allegedly the inspiration for Quint from Jaws, the the captain. Although he didn't have the personality of Quint, but he was just that prolific as a shark fisherman. And an awful lot of white sharks um, came up on, on his boat and were weighed at Montauk's. Um, so he did a lot of scientific data came, came from that, but a lot of white sharks died too. So this is him. This is one of his bigger animals. So how big do white sharks get? Are they, you know, are they really big here? Well, Yes, that's a pretty bloody big fish in my estimation. Um, this is a male. Anyone wants to know how you tell a male from females? This is the pel pelvic uh, fins. And uh, in a male shark, these are modified into uh, what we call claspers. And these are actually the male intermittent organs. So every little kid I ever tell how you tell a male from a female and a shark, and I say they have two, they just think that's the best thing ever. They have two. <laughs> that's awesome. They have two, and I say one gets me in enough trouble. But, um, <laughs> so they have two, and what's, look how big that thing is compared. It's bigger than Mundus's head. I mean, Mundus's torso is as big as that thing's claspers. So this was a big one. This, was, um, this animal, I think, was about 17 feet long. Um, now, I should point something out. Alf Dean in 1959 took out that 2,664-pounder 2, with rod and reel. Frank Mundus had, he would land some with rod and reel, but when they were getting up into this stage, he invented a new kind of fishing, which was called rod, reel, and harpoon, which you don't get records for. No records for harpooning the fish when you were reeling it up. So that's why we don't have the records as far as the rod and reel records here, but in point of fact, we do have the records here, right here in New York, for some of the biggest white sharks ever reliably measured and weighed. And that is one of them. Again, that's another male, same, same deal, same guy, um, another big one. So this is me, this is a mount down at um, the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk. Um, this, this animal, uh, they, measure, they weighed, it was 17 feet long, and it was 3,475 pounds uh, weighed, weighed in, so that's definitely, that's, that's what it was. So the story behind this was, where, uh, Mundus and his, his crew would go out and they would look for whale carcasses. If you had a whale carcass out off Montauk, it was absolutely guaranteed you'd have a few of these big things feeding on it. And then you'd hook it up and then harpoon it and then bring it in. So this, you can go see this for yourself. This was just this summer. Um, I can tell you personally this shark could swallow your hole because I crawled up there to prove <laughs> that he could do that. Actually, when I say he, this is a she. So the female sharks are bigger than the males. So if you have a male that's 16 feet, you can take it to the bank. You've got a female that's going to be 20 feet out there. So the males are always uh, smaller. This is a female. Uh, this one was not weighed, but they estimated the weight was 4,500 pounds. Another one, uh, this one you can find the head in a, in a bar in Montauk. 
So another, another big one. It was, this one was, again, about 17 feet or more. So they get big. Do they get old? Well, how do you tell a shark's age? Well, this is, this is actually uh, one of the pieces of a shark's vertebrae, its backbone. So each one of those pieces is called a centrum. And what's really cool about them is they have these rings. And these rings are laid down in a periodic way. So just like you can count the rings and figure out how old a tree or a coral is, you can do the same thing with any kind of a shark. Well, almost any kind of a shark. But you have to validate how often these rings are formed. With white sharks, what we, there hasn't been a definitive grow, age and growth study because they've as yet been unable to, to validate how many, how many rings are formed per year. But if they're anything like their relatives, it's one band per year. And so the age and growth work that has been done so far suggests that white sharks are probably maturing at around the age of 10, and they're living 30 to 50 in that, in that region. So they're a long-lived long animal, and they're late to mature.